Hello Python students. Let me start this lecture with a question. When is the first time you used a Python function in this particular course? And now most of you must be thinking, what kind of a question is that? This entire week is about functions. So obviously we used function first time in the first lecture of this particular week. But then I will say you are wrong. This is not the first week or not the first time you have seen Python functions. The correct answer for that question is first week, first lecture, first ever line of Python code you wrote was a function. Confused? Let me explain it this way. We all started writing a Python programs using print. So far we are referring it using various different names like print command, print statement or just print and so on. But the most accurate term for print is function. Print is a function. That's why I said we all have used function in week 1, lecture 1, the first ever line of python program we have written. Now the next question is, unknowingly, is that the only function we have used so far or are there more functions which we use without realizing that it's a function? And the answer is yes. We have used many different types of functions even before we started this week. Only thing is, we never referred those as functions. Therefore, in this particular lecture, we will go back to few of those functions and try to categorize all such functions we have used so far into four different categories. And then we will see what is the difference between all these types of functions. Let me start with some examples. Print, input and len. We all have used these functions many times. That is the first category of functions. Before going into depth of this particular category, let me give you few more examples of second category. Log, square root, random, rand range, calendar, month. Let's look at third category. Upper, lower, strip, count, index, replace. And then the fourth category. A function called square. Now, as I have explained, there are four different categories and also I have given some examples of each category. Now, can you tell me on what basis these functions are divided into four categories? There has to be some similarity between the functions in same category. At the same time, there has to be some difference between functions from different category. Can you tell me what that difference is? or what that similarity is. Let's start with the first category. In order to use these functions print, input, len, simply print in bracket some value will print the particular value. Input will take the input. For example, len with some string will give us the length of that particular string. We do not have to do anything additional to use these particular functions. Therefore, these type of functions are called as inbuilt functions. Because these functions are part of Python programming language itself. Whereas, if you look at second category of functions, log or square root functions belong to math library. Random or rand range functions belong to random library and 
calendar or month functions belong to calendar library these functions can be used only when you import that specific library and mention that this function belongs to some xyz library then only the computer will allow you to use these functions which means these functions are part of that specific library not the python itself therefore these category of functions are referred as library functions moving to next category upper lower strip count index replace all these functions can be executed only using strings and when that is the case instead of calling them functions we call them methods or more specifically string methods but still they are nothing but functions and then when we reach to our last category of functions for computer this square of 5 has no meaning until we explicitly define the meaning of that particular function in this case we explicitly telling the computer that this is what you are supposed to execute when we say square of some number which means we are defining this function hence this category of the function is referred as user defined functions based on this understanding we can say that all the functions we have used so far fall under these four categories in build functions library functions string methods or functions and four user defined functions but if you observe two more similarities with respect to the presentation of these functions irrespective of their categories a function is represented in this yellowish color in replet and it is always followed by these parentheses this parenthesis is the standard way of representing a function every function is always followed by a parenthesis at the same time you must be wondering why only inbuilt functions and user defined functions are following this particular color representation over here whereas library functions and string methods are not following that particular convention in replet this is because in case of library function log must be written along with math dot log now you can see the color has been changed same math dot square root random dot random calendar dot month and so on so now you can tell me what we have to do with string methods as these are string methods we should start these methods or functions with strings and then you will see it is following the same convention as we mentioned earlier one more very important thing we have to remember while using user defined functions whenever we use any user defined function the name of the function has to be in a specific way just like a variable name earlier we have seen various rules which we must follow while naming a variable all those exact rules has to be followed while naming a function as well let me summarize what we have seen so far let me remove these additional things we saw functions first time in the first ever lecture 
we have seen in this particular course where we used print function not command or a statement and these functions fall under the category called inbuilt functions then this type of function fall under library functions then the third category of functions is referred as methods now these methods can be of string type and as we go on we will introduce few more categories of methods and the most recently we have introduced the fourth category of functions called as user defined functions this is the place where as a programmer as a user we will decide what will be the functionality or what will be the definition of that particular function at the same time we will also define what will be the name of that function and this naming has to be done by following the same rules which we have seen earlier with variables thank you for watching this lecture happy learning